Welcome POA online community. We are so glad to have you tonight. It's going to be an amazing night talking about the gift of discernment. 
Before we start, we want to start out with prayer. Of course, you can put your prayer requests in the comments below, and we will read them and be praying for them. But let's right now all pray together. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace today. We could not be here without you. And we pray for every need represented, every need that's been spoken, God, those that are hurting in their, their body physically or mentally, in their family situation, job situation. We reach out to you right now, God, and we pray that you would be in the midst of those needs. We love you and we thank you for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now is the time where we will come and we will give. And we're so honored and blessed to be able to give here at POA. At the bottom of your screen, there are different ways that you can give through text and email and, and through the app in different ways. And so I pray right now that you would allow God to speak to you about something to give. Most of the funds do not stay here at POA, but we disperse them around the world into missions, into different situations that, that need assistance financially. And so we pray that you would would allow God to speak to you to give of any amount that you feel necessary. And I promise you, God will bless you because he's blessed me many times. Tonight is going to be awesome. We have Brother Rob Riddle, and he's going to be talking about the gift of discernment. And before that, I want to remind you that you can like us on Facebook or YouTube. Feel free to share this this video to share it with anybody and also if you're in town here in central Louisiana or online you can join us this Sunday at 9 and 11 for our Sunday services but tonight we've got brother Rob Riddle the gift of discernment get out your notebook get your pen ready and join us for the gift of discernment so starting tonight with 1st Corinthians chapter 12 I'm sure y'all have read this chapter once or twice in the Bible studies in the last few Wednesday nights. But I've uh, wanted to uh, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, kind of get the foundation and the base for what are starting. Uh, hopefully it'll be on the screen in a minute. If not, uh, I have it. You have your Bibles and maybe there it is. All four verses because I want to draw your attention. We're going to stay here a few minutes. I love studying Paul. I've been studying Paul a good bit for the last couple of years. I like the way he writes. I like the way he teaches. I like the way he thinks. And I will say that uh, if you study Paul, Paul's life long enough, you'll find out he was probably not the most gentle person you've ever met. He was probably not the most uh, um, easygoing guy. He was very quick to get in your face. And not many people would stand up to Peter, but Paul said, oh, yeah, I got right in his face. When he was wrong, I, got, uh, I told him about it, you know. And so uh, the Corinthians was a pretty interesting church, and they were doing a lot of very interesting things. I think if Brother Parker was here, this was one night I was able to make it. Brother Parker was teaching that Corinthians, rightfully so, had a lot of issues, and they didn't even have social media. The problem is that most of Corinthians' problems started right here. And if we're not careful, most of our problems start right here, and we do have social media. So, you know, we really should pay attention to the things then that Paul did right talking to the Corinthians. And going with 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. If you don't mind, I'm going to read it with you. Now, concerning spiritual gifts... All right, I'm going to stop right there. I'll go. We're going to take it piece by piece. If uh, I really enjoyed studying English grammar in high school and in college, I didn't major in it, but I really enjoy it. I like watching words. I like looking at words. And I'm especially interested in why Paul put certain words where he did. For example, now, first word. That word now implies... Then we're going to talk about something, but before we talk about this, I have to make sure you did understand everything that was previously said, right? Because, you know, we're going to count one, two, three, but I want to get to five. One, two, three, four. Now, five is next. All right? So you understand that he's talking about now concerning spiritual gifts. But everything before, if chapters one through 11, was, Paul was uh, it, dealing with two to three issues per chapter, if you study Corinthians well. So that's about 22 issues that he dealt with. 
And he gets to chapter 11, he talks about divine order of God. And I love that study. It's an enjoyable study on the divine order of God. And he ends up talking about the order of having communion in the body, in the church. And you got to get that right because some, he was given issues of that. And he's dealing with all those issues. And he got all that set up. End of chapter 11, he starts chapter 12 with now concerning spiritual gifts. All right, we got all that platform. We got all that foundation set up. And let's move to spiritual gifts and he says brother i would not have you ignorant i would not have you unlearned we know that ye were gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as ye were led that's an interesting sentence to start spiritual gifts study think about it that's what you're you know i've been in i've taught on spiritual gifts before and I've been in classes that taught on spiritual gifts. And even Brother Billy Cole taught one of the classes when we were on the East Coast. We had a lot of ministers meeting in smaller groups. And he, he was there a lot. And he started at verse 4. Okay? He skipped chapter, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. And I didn't catch it then. But in studying this, I kind of caught, wait a minute. Paul's given us a summary of spiritual gifts. And that summary is, he starts it with, Ye know that when you were Gentiles, you were carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. So something about spiritual gifts has a lot to do with that sentence. One of the things to think about is spiritual gifts can lead you. If you think about it, he's comparing it. Spiritual gifts, it's kind of associated with being led by dumb idols. So we need to know just from that right there, we need to make sure that what we're following is of the Spirit of God. All right, so you see the importance. He doesn't really dive into it, but he gives us enough meat and enough muscle here for us to kind of arm wrestle. What are you trying to tell us, Paul? First of all, be careful of what you follow. Wherefore, I give unto you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. That's pretty safe for us to say. It would be if... If he's warning us not to follow something, and I'm standing before you tonight, I kind of hope I say the right things that you can follow the Lord through the words that I say. Don't follow me, follow the Lord. But if I stood up here and said Jesus was a curse, you would know immediately that I'm a dumb idol. <laughs> Don't follow me. But no man by the Spirit of God can say that Jesus is a curse. And no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Okay, what's that saying to us? That's saying that basically everything that's going to follow after, you need to have the Holy Ghost to truly understand, number one, who Jesus is. You need to have the Holy Ghost to get the revelation of how he can help us, how he's going to lead us, and we know then by then that we're not following dumb idols because we have the Holy Ghost in us, which we're going to find out later, is how we're used in the spiritual gifts. We have the Holy Ghost which can lead us and guide us into all truth and knowing that we're the children of God, not following dumb idols. Amen. Now, that's all in the first two, three verses, and I hadn't even got to discerning the spirits yet. So, okay, I'm going to read that again, because the very first word in, chapter, in verse 4 is the same thing. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give unto you to understand... That no man speaketh by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, concerning spiritual gifts. Again, the word now. You can't go to spiritual gifts and the diversity of spirits until you understand that no man says Jesus is accursed that speaks by the Spirit of God. And that you have to have the Holy Ghost to even know who Jesus is. You have to have the Holy Ghost to make sure you're not being led by False doctrine. So once we establish that, there's two perspectives of the same coin. You have to have the Holy Ghost. You have to have the Spirit of God to get the spiritual gifts, and you have to have the Spirit of God to be led by God because that's how the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. And that's how we know that we're children of God. That's how you know that if what I'm saying tonight is true because I'm a man, I'm fallible, I can say things that are completely wrong, and I hope that in your spirit, if you have the Holy Ghost, I hope that in your spirit, your spirit would go a little bit just, hey, check and balance that, hey, what he is saying is 
not right or what he's saying is right. That's what you need the Holy Ghost for. Because when it gets down to it, this is an individual race. If you're going to be saved, it's because you want to be saved. If you're going to be saved, it's because you desire to seek the Lord. If you're going to be saved, it's because you desire to be led by God and not by something else, what Paul calls a dumb idol. So now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. So now he starts breaking down the list of the nine spiritual gifts. And we, he's established here that you have to have the Holy Ghost to know these gifts and to recognize these gifts, even understand what these gifts are for. And we know through studying, and I'm sure if someone said it several times in the past few Wednesday nights, that the, Holy, the gifts of the Spirit are for what? Edification of the body, right? Has that been said at least once on Wednesday nights? Quite a bit, I'm sure, I hope, because that is the purpose of the spiritual gifts. Now, let me step back in these four verses, and I want you to think about the nuances that Paul is trying to give us. Because I really dive in when I study in Paul. There's a lot that he doesn't say that is implied. But how can you edify the body? We try to understand I want to edify the body. One way I can edify you is pat you on the back, brother, saying, great job. Good to see you. Shake your hand. Good to see you. I can build you up. Hopefully, if you are having a bad day, I can, some of my energy maybe or joy can rub off on you and I can edify you that way. But through spiritual gifts, how do we edify one another? Well, first of all, we have to abide by the two rules or the two perspectives of the one rule that is set apart in verse uh, where it says, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And by the Holy Ghost, you can say that Jesus is Lord. When you use whatever energy you have, whatever thought is in your mind, whatever work is in your hand, whatever spirit moves upon you fulfills those two things. Then you're starting to edify the body. Because I start saying that Jesus is Lord and the spirit bears witness and the people around me can start saying amen. But if I don't have the Holy Ghost, I can still say Jesus is Lord, but there's no power behind it. There's no bearing witness with it. There's no inside of you bearing witness with the words coming out of me. And now we're starting to tap into a little bit of the spiritual gifts. And for tonight, I'm talking about discerning the spirits. Paul gives that summary of the gifts and how we can edify one another. When the Spirit edifies, when the Spirit, okay, catch, catch this, when the Spirit edifies, builds up, heals the body through us, then we edify Jesus Christ. He gets the glory by us being a vessel of His Spirit to the body. And that's why I suggest be very careful to use the word I when we're talking about spiritual gifts. Because it's all about him. It's not about me. It's not about us. When I start lifting up and saying Jesus is Lord, and I start by my words and by my actions, I'm declaring that, this, that God and Jesus are trying to save us all. Then I'm edifying him, which is edifying the body of Christ, which is edifying you. And I... Three verses. I hope I'm making it a little clear. Because normally we jump to verse 4 right there where it says, now there are diversities of gifts. And there are diversities of gifts. Look across this crowd, a very diverse crowd. First of all, separation, there's men and women here. Right? That's part. There's a little older, a little younger, some little children here. So we got quite a diverse crowd. I'm from Baton Rouge. Some of you are from Alexander. Some of you may be in from another country or another state. So we're a very diverse crowd. But even when we started praying earlier, this diverse crowd felt the one spirit of God, and everybody did a few things a little different. We all worshiped God in diversity. Some clapped their hands. Some spoke out loud. Some bowed their heads. Some just clutched their, uh, their chest saying, oh, I feel you, Lord. I feel your presence. Some spoke in tongues. Some did not. Some spoke out loud. There's diversity of gifts even in our worship because there's diversity of people. So therefore, I can expect all of us to walk differently, look differently, but we follow the self-same spirit. And when we do that, we're magnifying God and we're fulfilling the scriptures and calling Jesus is Lord by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let me tell you what discerning of spirits is. Let me give a definition. 
Now, there's a book I have over in my Bible case by Brother Morton Bustard. He was here, I think, the last, last time we had Wednesday night. And uh, it's kind of intimidating a little bit. I was told I was following him. I'm like, oh, boy, he wrote the book on it. I have a, he has a book that he wrote early and called just, uh, just um, Don't Sweat It. That's the name of it. Don't Sweat It. I think it's in the bookstore. I recommend it. It's an easy read. He breaks it down pretty easy. And I'm using his definition of discerning of spirits tonight. Because the reason I'm doing this is you know how many times the uh, discerning of spirits is in the Bible? One time. Nowhere in the Bible is it described. The one time that discerning of spirits is in the Bible is here in chapter 12. It's in the list of the nine spiritual gifts, and that's all we know. The rest of it we have to in, intuitively walk through scriptures. We could see some examples possibly, but it's never declared in the scripture. This is the gift of discerning of spirits. So I had to lean on other sources to get a good definition, and I kind of followed the rest. Of, I've heard some of the definitions from other Wednesday nights. Here it is. Discerning of spirit, spirits is the supernatural revelation or understanding of things pertaining to the spiritual realm. Boy, that sounds fancy. Let me simplify that a little bit. It's mainly given to us to know good and evil. Good or evil. It is not, this is what it is not, it is not divination, it is not mental telepathy, it is not ESP, it is not even human perception. Ladies that have had children, I've heard, and I know that my mom and I had a connection too, that a mom can just hear by the tone of the voice if a child is hurt or not. Nobody else has that connection. That's Human perception, that's a mother-child bond. Discerning of spirits is not even that because that's human. That's gifts from God that he's given us as human or maybe talents, how you want to look at it. But it's not the spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts, we're given nine of them. And these nine, discerning of spirits, is for us to know good from evil. I'm going to give you an example, and I think everybody here that has the Holy Ghost is going to recognize that you have been used in discerning of spirits. Many classes I've taught on discerning of spirits have always asked, I want to be used, I want to be used. That's a great thing, but you probably have been used, if you have the Holy Ghost, you probably have been used in a spiritual gift of some way, fashion, or another. You may not have even realized it. But here's one for you. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about another friend of mine. he gives give his testimony. Good friend of mine, but he's not from here. He's from Atlantic City. He and I have traveled to different countries quite a bit together. So before he came to the Lord, he was in his 20s. Before he came to the Lord, he had a very bad drug habit, very bad drug habit. And he won't mind me even saying he, he was doing $100 a day heroin, okay, before he came to the Lord. That blows my mind, and this is back in the 70s. $100 a day heroin habit. He went to bed with it, and he woke up with it just normal he didn't know that it was wrong he just knew that this was the way he was living so every day he went to bed he went to sleep using drugs he woke up needing drugs that was a habit he gets witness to he goes to a church service he gets the holy ghost he gets baptized in jesus name a good shot in the arm i mean he was he got the full dose of it okay he goes home, he goes to bed, he falls asleep, the best night's sleep he's ever had in his life. He wakes up the next morning, and out of habit, he reaches over to the nightstand. Far the normal, everyday thing that he didn't know was wrong. He just, you know, I wish I didn't do it, but it's, it's what everybody else is doing. It must be right and everything. So that night, the only difference from the day before and this morning is that previous night, he got the Holy Ghost. All the other mornings before, he reached over to his nightstand and got his, his help. Okay, never knew that it was wrong. Never was told when he got the Holy Ghost that, hey, don't do all that old stuff. He just came in church. It was a blowout. He felt the presence of God. He got the Holy Ghost. He goes home. No one trained him. No one told him. No one did anything for him. No one wrote it all out. This is what you do. This is what you don't do. He hadn't even read the Bible. He told me he didn't even own one. His mom owned the family Bible. So he wakes up the next morning, fresh, new with the Holy Ghost, but he reaches over for the, to the nightstand. And he felt, that's not right. No one told him. No one trained him. 
discerning of spirits move for you to know when you have the Holy Ghost, right from wrong, good versus evil. Now, you fill in the blank. I, you know, hope I've had experiences like that. I think everybody here has had some kind of experience like that where you may be put in a situation where you don't really know, but then all of a sudden you feel, I shouldn't go there. I shouldn't do that. Or uh, maybe I shouldn't talk to that person right now. Or I should go somewhere else. That's how discerning the spirits work. Whatever it is that the Holy Ghost supernaturally gives you this information, you are now tapping into the spiritual realm where you can know what's evil and what's true. Once you recognize, have the ability through the Holy Ghost to recognize evil versus truth, then you will not call Jesus accursed, and you will not be led about by dumb idols, and you will know who Jesus Christ is. So... Don't be afraid of spiritual gifts and don't think that they're, oh, something only the mature get. No, maturity is not given by or shown by spiritual gifts. Excuse me. Maturity is shown by the fruit of the Spirit. And now I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. The how this happens. If you would uh, turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Romans 8, 16. This is a scriptural description of what I just described. Just so that you know that I'm not making this up off the top of my hat. Here's the description. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you know that you're the children of God, then you know who Jesus is because you have the Holy Ghost. Verse 14, but previous says, many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So the spirit of God is leading you. You're the child of God. You know that you're a child of God. Why? Because the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. That means when, when my friend reached for the nightstand, the spirit bore witness that that ain't right. And it pulled back. That's when you walk in certain places, you feel the spirit of God move. Nothing that you've done. You're thinking about work. You're thinking about everything else. And you walk in this place and all of a sudden you feel a check. That's discerning of spirits. That's the spiritual gifts working in you. Sometimes it's wisdom. Sometimes it's word of knowledge. Whatever it is, whatever spiritual gift it is that's saving you, he's keeping you, strengthening you, helping you to know more who Jesus is by experience. So we know that we can be used. If you have the Holy Ghost, you can be used and walk in the spiritual gifts. This is how it works. The spirit bears witness with our spirit. It, that in itself is the definition of a supernatural. You think about the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God that made all of this is bearing witness with my spirit. He made me a little lower than the angels. He made all of us out of the dust of the, of the earth. And yet the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. That's the supernatural. That's moving and walking with God, being led with God. He helps us through the minefields of life. And the discerning of spirits is not always for evil. As many a times, there was a young man I met once. I shook his hand. I'm like, sir, do you have the Holy Ghost? He goes, yes. I felt it. It was good. I knew then I could trust him. I could talk to him about the Lord. I could just, I didn't have to have my guard up that you may have to have outside sometimes in the world. But, you know, it's, it's there to help us walk through the spiritual realm, good and evil. We know both. We can have truth. We can know by this that this, I am walking after God and not after a dumb idol. Amen. Some things that I've learned after once I learn how it works, I'd like to share with you some tidbits of, I uh, hesitate to call it wisdom. <laughs> understanding, experience, called hard knocks, really. The category of spiritual gifts comes in, I'm probably going to repeat this. It's something y'all may already know, but in case you're new here tonight, spiritual gifts come in three categories. The knowledge gifts, which is word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. The faith gifts, which is the gift of faith, the gift of healing and working of miracles. And the gift of prophecy, which is a speaking gift, the gift of prophecy, diverse tongues, interpretation of tongues. Okay? I, I don't think this is new here. Three categories. Categories are knowledge gifts, faith gifts, speaking gifts. They often, very often, support one another. 
Okay? Well, of course, they wouldn't contradict one another. And what I mean by support one another, they often come in threes. They come in a group. An example of this is uh, tongues and interpretation. Uh, Sister uh, Jennifer, the other night when you gave Sunday, when you gave tongues and interpretation, I was kneeling down by you. You, you and I were on the same page because I almost started when you started first. I said, thank you, Lord, she's got it. I don't, I don't have to get in there. Because, it, again, if we all have the Holy Ghost, we can feel it's that discerning of spirits. We can feel when God's about to move. We can feel when God's about to do something. We can feel. We can move in God's presence. We can work together. And I can support her. As soon as she started speaking, I, I knew what she needed prayer for because I know what I need prayer for when I'm giving tongues or interpretation. Lord, let me hear clearly your word. Yeah, confirmation. I, I, I struggle with that. Lord, let me clearly hear your word. Remove Robbie out of the way. Get my thoughts out of the way and, and humble me, Lord. I have to humble myself. So once you start feeling that move and someone steps out in the gift, start praying for them. Praying for them. Lord, bless them. Give them strength, Lord. Give them a clear mind, clear understanding. So tongues and interpretation. There are tongues, which is diverse kind of tongues. Then there's the interpretation of tongues, and that is almost always prophetic. So there's your three gifts working in tandem together. Those are the speaking gifts. Faith gifts. You have the gift of faith. Many times when the gift of faith, the spirit of, a spiritual move of the gift of faith comes, there's healings or miracles that go with it. If you step out and the Lord leads you to work, a, a, be moved by the spirit to use the spirit, uh, the spirit of uh, uh, healing or miracle, working of miracles, that's the word I was trying to remember, working. If the Lord moves you into working of miracles, guess what? You will have the spirit of faith, the gift of faith with it. And many times the miracle is the healing. So they work in tandem. They work together. So when you have one or you feel one, expect and long for the other two. And that, that expectation opens the door for the spirit to move freely. Okay? So this is not some mysterious thing that you have to really work at and fast for 100 days straight and everything else to get. No, you just have to have the Holy Ghost. You have to have you focus on Jesus Christ, knowing who he is, and love one another. And if God uses you to praise the Lord, be available. Now, here's the next one. I'll take a few minutes here. Knowledge gifts. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning the spirits. Notice they're knowledge gifts. <laughs> they're, uh, they're not speaking gifts. Okay. Knowledge is usually given for you to know. And sometimes, many times, it's for you to know only. Now, this is a, and I've gone through this when I spoke when I should not have. And I've learned since then that silence rarely fails me. <laughs> so, and I'm praying, Lord, wisdom comes with the knowledge gifts. Please, wisdom come with the other two knowledge gifts because I need the wisdom to know how to use that knowledge. So just keep in mind that knowledge gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, is just that, knowledge, generally knowledge for you, who God gave it to, and not necessarily for you to speak it, okay? Um, check the time here so I know how many examples I can give. One example, first time I kind of recognized it as definitely discerning of spirits, and then knowledge and wisdom came with it. Uh, I had two friends of mine pick me up from Philadelphia Airport years ago before I was even married and uh, save, save uh, the parking for my car. They said, yeah, sure, we'll pick you up. And they picked me up. Hey, we're in Philadelphia. If you don't mind, we need to go by this bookstore because there's a book we want to see if they have that we've been looking for. Nobody in our town has it. Sure, no problem. Hey, I'm along for the ride. Great. Well, we pull into Philadelphia where the uh, bookstore was, and I'm seeing the sign, and I'm like, hmm, this is going to be interesting. Rob, come on in. So I've been witnessing these two guys, good friends of mine. They worked for me, actually. We go in the bookstore, and as soon as I walk in, I'm like, yeah, this is a bookstore. It's a bookstore, a religious bookstore, uh, mostly for the occult. So here I am with the Holy Ghost, walking in the middle of a bookstore, like, okay, <laughs> yeah, this. So I walked right in, and oh, it will only be five minutes, Rob. Okay, no problem. I'm here. 
And I'm, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, but I also don't want to go and tempt certain things, so I'm, but I'm here. And in the middle of the bookstore, this back in the 80s, uh, not tell how old I am, middle of the bookstore is a table full of crystals. Some of y'all might know what that is. It, it, it's nothing, because I'd been hearing about these crystals, and we had a, you know, different people t- excuse me, talk about it. And so anyway, this, I walk up, and I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. I said, Lord, I'm here, so I want to take advantage of it. I've heard that there's supposedly power in these rocks, and your scripture says that if we don't worship you, the rocks will cry out. So there's got to be something in the rocks, possibly, maybe, possibly. If there is, Lord, I know you're with me, and I know that you will bear witness that yes, it is, or no, it's not. So I reach over, and I pick up one. I'm like, nope, not there. Pick up another one. Nope, not there. Set it down. And I look across the table, and there's a lady on the other side of the table doing the same thing. But she's holding it a little longer, and finally she looks up at me, Brother Adams, and just stares. Now I'm sitting there, I'm holding another crystal. And I'm, instantly, it didn't take a lot of discernment, but instantly I knew, you know, good and, and evil and truth. <laughs> the word of knowledge came that I knew what she was. And she's staring a hole through me, man, trying to intimidate me. I mean, staring a hole through me, just closer than you and I, you know, just six feet away. There's no guile in me. I'm laid back. I'm easy going. Word of wisdom came to me, killer kindness. Hey, how you doing? I smile at her real big. Hope you're having a good night. And she just walks off. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't jump up and say, I discern that you're evil. (laughs) You know, it was best that I kept that to myself because I was extremely outnumbered in this store. And it was not the place. It's not the time. God says, let all things be done decently and in order. So through discernment, knowledge, and thankfully wisdom, I just smiled out and said, hi, good evening. And, and broke the whatever chant spell, whatever she was trying to put on me. Greater is he that's in me. So I was fine. I don't recommend that, but hey, we're fine. We, we've got the Holy Ghost, remember? All right? So, you know, wisdom, again, like I said, silence rarely fails me. Yes, I did speak, but I was just being polite. But I didn't jump out and give her what I knew. God gave it to me as knowledge. I kept it and used it. I'm going to give you another example that I think you'll enjoy. That uh, for men, those of you that are married, okay? Now, this is a... I'm freely going to admit this is a physical example. It's a carnal example. It's not a spiritual example, but the rules still apply, and I think you'll understand the principle of silence very well with this example. All right, gentlemen, you've married. I want you to go back with me in time, early in your marriage, first month or two, when your wife goes to your mom and finds out what your favorite meal is. All right, gets a recipe from your, your mom, what your favorite meal is. She goes home, cooks that favorite meal for you, and you walk in the door from work, and it is on the table, and you sit down, and very quickly you discern, whether by smell or by sight, that this is not the same as your mom's. Okay? And then you take a bite. You get that first bite, and you get knowledge firsthand that it is not the same as your mom's. All right? By some of you laughing, this might be getting hitting closer to home than normal okay so you now have discernment that it's not the same you have knowledge you took a bite of it it's not the same as your mom's now where's wisdom (laughs) wisdom says keep it to yourself (laughs) this might be the one time that lying is acceptable yeah I don't know, don't, don't, don't twist my words. But anyway, pray that God gives you wisdom and understanding how to answer that next question that you know it's coming. Honey, is it good? Oh, yes, ma'am. Pray, Lord, don't let her ask the next one. Is it just like your mom's? I, you understand? Silence rarely fails me. Sometimes it's best to keep things to yourself Come up with some creative ways of wisdom and experience to answer those tough questions. 
And hopefully in prayer, through prayer, that meal will become your new favorite meal. Amen? So, with the, with the use of these spiritual gifts, we can pray also for maturity. The more we're used in them, the more we'll mature through experience, like those experiences I've just given you. We kind of gain knowledge and gain some strength, whether physically or, or spiritually, emotionally. But definitely in the Holy Ghost, we can gain strength but, strength. but that strength is to be used for the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, and 23, I'm sure this has been said to you before. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there's no law. I love that part. If you walk in these, the fruit of the Spirit, if you're doing your best and you're seeking after the fruit of the Spirit, there is no law that you can break. There's no law against it. The Bible says, live peaceably with all men as much as lies within you. Let's go back to that story of the wife cooking your favorite meal. If I love my wife through all of that, which I do, she's sitting right there, 30 years this December, through love, we worked through that. <laughs> and her cooking is my favorite cooking now. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Jerry. Yeah, good answer. Through temperance. <laughs> Through the joy, the fruit of the Spirit, in love, there's no law against it. In joy, there's no law against it. Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, there is no law against that. Faith, meekness, and temperance, there's no law against it. Through all of that, it helps me live peaceably with all men as much as lies within me. So the more the fruit of the Spirit's there, the more I can fulfill that scripture. And the more the fruit of the Spirit is there, the more the source that I have, the more the source, which is the Spirit of God, I have, then I'm more free and more available for the working of the gifts of the Spirit to flow freely. And when we speak, the speaking gifts or the use any of the spiritual gifts, they're flowing through the fruit of the Spirit, which has no law against. So therefore, we can use the spiritual gifts correctly, without confusion, without offenses, without pain, and without embarrassment. The last thing, Colossians 3, 14. Paul tells us to put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Okay, now what's this have to do with spiritual gifts? Well, when you read 1 Corinthians, you'll find out that there's chapter 12. It talks about, gives a list of spiritual gifts, and it is a chapter that, is all spiritual. It talks about everything spiritual. Now, remember, I, this is one of my studies I do on our Monday night Bible studies all the time, but I need to make you all aware of it. I always break down, I'm not, sorry, I most of the time break down scriptures and Bible studies in body, soul, and spirit for a carnal man, or spirit, soul, and body for a spiritual man. Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, Paul says, I pray that your whole body, spirit, soul, and body, be held blameless and perfect before the Lord, before the day of the Lord come. I'm paraphrasing. So a spiritual man, definition is spirit, soul, and body. Paul is giving the Corinthian church spiritual guidance. Chapter 12 is a spiritual list of gifts that he can give to us, spiritual. Chapter 14 talks about how those spiritual gifts should work in the body. If you study them, go home, read, you'll see. He starts giving rules and guidelines, chapter 14, how the spiritual gifts work in the body, a congregation, the body of Christ, the thing that we're to be edifying, the body of Christ, the church, us. So you have the spirit, chapter 12. You have the body, chapter 14. What chapter is in the middle of those two? Chapter 13, which is the whole chapter of charity. Charity suffereth long. Charity bonded not itself. It gives a whole list of everything. Charity. What bonds the spirit to the body is charity. What is charity? Charity is the love that can only come from God, that reaches between one and another and can walk in the presence of God and in the presence of flesh at the same time and bond the two together because the spiritual gifts in chapter 14 are used to convert the unbelievers. So for us to bond and use charity as the bond, the glue, that holds perf perfectness. For us to use chapter 12, spiritual gifts, 
in chapter 14, in the body, we need charity. We need the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. We need the charity that comes from God that holds us together so that we can demonstrate that we know Jesus is Lord because we have the Holy Ghost. And, and another thing, chapter 15, when Paul says, he finishes chapter 14, let me show you a more perfect way, to go, and goes into 13 and 14, how it works in the body, and then at the end of 14, he goes right into verse, chapter 15, and it starts off with, moreover, another one of those words, and I'm not studying chapter 15, but it's a fancy, a good word, moreover, if you understand that, moreover, should you understand this, and he starts talking about, in the only place in the Bible where he fully, concisely gives the description of the gospel, if, who's familiar with chapter 15 Corinthians, okay? He says, starts off, moreover, brother, let me declare unto you the gospel that I have taught and has taught to me, whereby you are saved and you'll continue in the gospel that Jesus died according to the scriptures. He was buried and resurrected according to the scriptures. Semi a colon, meaning further explanation, okay? So he gives in three verses, first four verses, probably should pull it up but don't I didn't give him that list so just ride with me he says the gospel is Jesus died he was buried he was resurrected and he was seen of Cephas he was seen of uh, James a uh, John I'm sorry seen of John he was seen of the 400 and the uh, 500 that saw him after his resurrection and then he was seen of James and second, lastly lastly he was seen of Paul Paul said that he was lastly seen of myself as one born out of due time one sentence that is not several sentences that's one sentence he was buried he used the word died once he was buried he used the word buried once he used resurrected once but he used the word seen four times so for us what I get out of that studying this tonight and I'll end in just a minute what I get out of that is I need the spiritual gifts and the spirit walking with God. I need the charity of chapter 13 to bond it to the body of Christ so that I can save those around me and demonstrate that I am a child of God so that I can truly show that I am a disciple of God and have walked through the gospel. Because we have chapter 12, the spirit, chapter 13, the emotion, the soul, and chapter 14, the body, to demonstrate and show that we are the children of God. Acts 1 and 8, one of my favorite scriptures. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. How does the Holy Ghost come upon us? It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And by that, I can show that I am a witness for God. Four steps. The gospel is four steps for me to, that showing is my walk with God after I receive the Holy Ghost. I can walk with him and show that I can truly be led by the Spirit and be used in his spiritual gifts, have the body of Christ edified as long as I put myself down and build up the love of God in chapter 13 through, through the soul of the body of Christ. We have to have charity. The bond of perfectness. So for us to walk in the spirit and still keep our feet on the ground, we need the love of God. That's more important than the spiritual gifts. They're important. I'm not saying they're not important. No, no, no. They're very important. They're very important. But you know what's more important is chapter 13 because chapter 12 ends with, but brethren, let me show you a more perfect way. For you to be completely perfect in God, we need to understand and know the charity of God. And you do yourself a favor. Go and read those 13 verses in chapter 13, and you'll find that is not human love. Many people call it the love chapter. And I understand it is a love chapter, but it's really the charity chapter because charity is the love of God. We're not talking about giving tax uh, uh, given money so we get tax deduction, charitable contribution. No, 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 that's not it at all. We've, we've used that word for something else. But the charity in the Bible is the love of God that can only come from him when we're seeking after him to walk in the spirit of God. And we'll find that that list and that checklist of charity is not our human love. I love that young lady right there very, very much. My wife, I love her very, very much. But every now and then she will say something or do something that would just chap my hide. 
I'm being honest. Who, who else will share that honestly with me? Okay, one or two. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't feel so alone now. I love her very much, but my human love is faulty. My human love needs work, and she's training me very well. But the love that comes from God in chapter 13, vaunted not itself, is not puffed up. All the things that only can come from God when we're being used in the spiritual gifts, when we're being used in a spiritual walk with God, that love can per- flow through us strongly. How else do you see Sister Vesta saying the things she does? When she truly says, oh, I love you, honey, she really means it. That's one of the things I admire about her so much, and I miss her tonight because she could close out for me. But for us to truly walk in the Spirit of God, truly use the spiritual gifts that we've been studying, discerning of spirits especially, we can discern. You can, another thing, I'll close with this. i got three minutes. You can discern. If you have the Holy Ghost, you can discern when somebody truly loves you. A lot of people out in the world without the Holy Ghost can discern that too. So if we wrap ourselves with a cloak of the charity, the love of God, and we use that, we walk in that, and we express that to the world, there's no stopping the church. There's no stopping us. Amen. I ask you to stand. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. I appreciate those that did. I'll just about everybody said amen at least once, I hope. And that helps. Thank you. So uh, in dismiss, Lord, we come before you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, for your chance to worship you tonight and call upon your name. Thank you, Lord, for anointing me. I pray that your words only, Lord, have been spoken through me. Lord, let your words go forth and anoint the people. Let us grow in your love. Let us grow in your power. Let us walk freely in your spirit. We praise you and worship you. Keep your hand upon us until we come back for Sunday morning. In Jesus' name we pray.